So Kamala Harris is now the lead spokesperson for the idea that Israel should not go into the final major city in the Gaza Strip, Rafa. She says that she knows better military plans, says Kamala Harris, which is incredible because her military experience is, is wide and varied, such as, for example, and also, so apparently she reads maps. I'm not kidding. That's her excuse. She, can, she looks at maps all day long. She's just in her office looking at maps. And now she knows what Israel should and should not do in Rafah. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafa would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. And we're looking at about a million and a half people in Rafa who are there because they were told to go there, most of them. And so we've been very clear that um, it would be a mistake to move into Rafa with any type of military operation. Any type of military operation, even like a small incursion into, into Rafa would be bad according to Kamala. She's looked at maps, guys. Well, if she had looked at a map, one of the things she might have noticed is that Rafa is right on the border of Egypt. Egypt is another country that the United States sends billions of dollars to every year. You know what the United States could do if it were deeply concerned about the civilians in Rafah? It could tell Egypt to open temporary housing camps on the Egyptian side of the border so civilians could go over there and then Israel could go into Rafah and try to clean out the terrorists. But no, what they're trying to create is a catch-22 for Israel, where if Israel does not go into Rafah, Israel loses. And if Israel does go into Rafah, the United States gets very angry and wags our finger at the Israelis for going in and attempting to extirpate Hamas. 20 bucks barely gets you anything these days. You can't even fill your gas tank or get a burger and fries for less than 20 bucks. But do you know what 20 bucks will get you? From the cell phone company I use, Pure Talk, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the same quality of service as your current cell phone provider, but for about half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can switch to Pure Talk and keep the phone and phone number you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Making the switch is incredibly easy. Their U.S. customer service team can help you join Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes. Choose to spend your hard-earned money with a wireless company that shares your values, supports our military and veterans, creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on, you know, the fake news networks. Stop spending a ridiculous amount of money on your phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Right now, my listeners can get an additional 50% off their very first month of coverage. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Again, puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Go check them out right now. puretalk.com slash Shapiro. By the way, how stupid is Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris is, she's almost charmingly stupid. Over the weekend, tape emerged of her. She was in Puerto Rico. And somebody in the in a crowd that was near where she was started playing some music and she started dancing to the music until it turns out that one of her aides informed her that the song that she was dancing to was about American imperialism and how America needs to leave Puerto Rico, which point she abruptly stops. Here is our idiotic vice president. She's smiling. She's tapping her feet, bopping her head to it, really enjoying herself, clapping her hands. And then somebody's going to come tell her in a second, uh, by the way, you know what you're clapping to? And then she's going to be like, oh, no. What a genius our vice president is. I mean, she, she is just, wow. She, I can see she was totally picked for her abilities. Truly incredible stuff. Meanwhile, the Democratic Party increasingly ruled by its left flank by people like AOC and Raphael Warnock. So AOC is so far out on the pro-Hamas side that she is now disagreeing with the basic premise that if Hamas laid, its ar- laid down its arms and released the hostages, that the war would be over tomorrow. She now thinks, like, uh, she's like just repeating Hamas talking points at this point. They also, Israeli officials also argue, this war could end tomorrow if Hamas freed the hostages and laid down the arms. Do you disagree? I do disagree because when we are talking about famine, The actions of Hamas should not be tied to whether a three-year-old can eat. The actions of Hamas do not justify forcing thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to eat grass as their bodies consume themselves. It is the actions of Hamas causing that. Hamas literally will not allow the aid to flow through to the civilians. Israel is sending in hundreds of trucks every single day. And you know why the food ain't hitting the civilians? Because Hamas is stealing all the food. But she hates Israel so much that Hamas apparently, it, it is incredible. There, there's this horseshoe, weird foreign policy thing that happens between the far right and the far left on American foreign policy. The sort of far right libertarian Ron Paul right and the far left AOC Bernie Sanders left. 
And it suggests that the only countries with agency in the world, the only people with agency in the entire world are the Western countries. Everybody else just doesn't count. So we just pretend that they're not part of the equation. So if there's something bad happening in Gaza, we just have to pretend that Hamas doesn't exist. Or if there is something bad happening in, say, Iraq or Iran, we just have to pretend that those governments don't exist. It's all the fault of the United States, always and forever. And it's stupid. It makes no sense. That's foreign policy for dummies. The reality is there are a lot of interlocking parts and a lot of varied interests when it comes to foreign policy. Foreign policy is more like a fifth grade playground than it is like anything else. And the reality is that Hamas has a lot to say about whether citizens are starving in the Gaza Strip. Just like Hamas had a lot to say about whether citizens were starving in the Gaza Strip, you know, before October 7th, when they were stealing literally all of the aid coming in and using it to build terror tunnels and pad their Tony apartments in Qatar. But AOC is a moral idiot. So, of course, that's what she believes. Raphael Warnock, another moral moron, suggesting it's morally unjustifiable for Israel to go into Rafa. Again, what's amazing to me is all these people say, Israel can't go into Rafa. It'll be so terrible. But Israel can still, there might be things we would accept. What's the thing you would accept? Seriously, what's the thing that you would accept? I'd love to hear it because they never present any actual plan. And this is something you see from the left when it comes to um, foreign policy and domestic policy. They'll say, well, you know, it, this, is, this is every Bernie Sanders economic policy. It's wrong. There are so many people who are rich and so many people who are poor. OK, well, what's your plan, dude? You ain't got no plan. All you like to do is rant at the wind. Now Democrats are out there pretending they got a military plan. Kamala Harris is sitting there with little tiny tanks and flags in the back room with a map, figuring out how to go into Rafa. Here's Raphael Warnock doing the same routine. We cannot forget uh, about the awful attack of Hamas on October 7th uh, against innocent <clears throat> people, including Americans. Uh, we can't turn away from that. And at the same time, we cannot turn away uh, from the scenes of awful suffering and human catastrophe uh, in Gaza. Uh, and so we will continue to fight for a negotiated ceasefire. Uh, I have said very clearly that I think for, the, for Mr. Netanyahu to go into Rafah, where some 1.4 million Palestinians uh, are now sheltering, uh, would be morally... Uh, unjustifiable. It would be unconscionable. And I hope that at the end of the day, cooler heads will prevail mm -hmm. and that one day we can get to a two-state solution. A two-state solution with whom? It's all fancy land nonsense. It's all fancy land nonsense. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 